The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, into the breach do we go, dear friends. So what do we have happening today? Well, uh, we're up slightly on the S&P cash. We're at uh, 2510. Uh, now, that's kind of half the story. That's up three and a half points. Uh, I think that there's a much bigger story coming out here. And one of the things is the actual, you can look at the volume, but you can also look at the dollars trading hands in the market. Um, yesterday, as we went into the close with about 10, 15 minutes left, uh, we had about uh, $215 billion uh, changing hands yesterday. Uh, by the end of the day, uh, in the last 10 minutes, almost $300 billion. And... You know, we went down five points. Uh, basically, since kind of the end of last week, uh, you've seen sellers at the close. Uh, today, again, you know, that number's about 300 billion. Uh, 134 billion so far. Uh, my guess is we're going to see not only super light volume in the markets, which were uh, turning out about 1.8 billion shares now, but uh, there's just not much juice in this market when we're talking about actual dollars spent. There used to be some stuff out there, uh, dollar-weighted average things that used to float around from time to time uh, in the indicators. But uh, what I can tell you now <laughs> is there's just not many dollars being exchanged. If we're going higher and you see this huge pullback in actual dollar amounts, uh, could you see more shares in something like the uh, the small caps where there's just not that much money to move? My small caps are pretty inexpensive stocks to begin with. You buy a thousand shares there, not the same thing as buying a thousand shares of Google or Amazon or the rest, right? And that's, I suspect, one of the reasons why we've got little actual total dollars being spent here at the market. It's not uncommon to see uh, the uh, small caps run. I thought maybe that was it. it looked like we got one more push yesterday. But uh, there just isn't any juice. We're going to look at the lack of juice in the semis today because uh, it is strikingly uh, huge. Uh, and what else do we have? Eh, a handful of things going on. Uh, anyway, eh, market a little higher. Yeah. Is the risk reward good? No. It's freaking fantastic. You you know, unless something changes between now and the end of the day, we are once again going to have very little juice, whether you measure it by shares uh, or, to me, much more important, by actual dollars uh, when we see this kind of disparity, selling at the close, and uh, what we're going to talk about today, which is the total lack of juice in some of these things like the SMHs today. So we'll get into all of that. You can give me a call. Tell me I'm all wet. Uh, you know, all the standard stuff at 877-927-6648. But, uh, of course, we always like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And there we go. Uh, some of you might have heard the show with uh, Tom last Friday and know that we are short Tesla. Uh, cover, covered that short in the uh, last hour. I do think it's going much lower. But there is a tendency. In fact, uh, well, I almost get to that in the charts. But I'll show you why I tested it. It didn't because it's going all that much higher, but uh, because of the way that highly shorted stocks do act. So remind me to get to that. Uh, but uh, just 1.866 uh, billion shares as we start the show. And of course, we've got to get into a little bit of histoire. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. 
Mm. On this day in 1941, the Boston Red Sox, Ted Williams, plays a doubleheader against the Philadelphia Athletics on the last day of the regular season and gets uh, six hits and eight trips to the plate to boost his batting average to 406 to become the first player since. I think uh, there's something there that I missed. Uh, Bill uh, Terry in 1930 hit 400. Williams suspended his entire career with the Sox, played final game exactly 19 years later. On September 28, 1960, at Boston's Fenway Park, and a hit a home run in his last time at bat for a career total of 521. I wasn't there. Just wondering, did they let him have that home run? Did he? someone throw one big fat one out there for him? Eh, you wonder. Of course, I didn't. I wasn't there, so I don't know. But that was, Those are the kind of questions I ponder late at night. Uh, but, of course, uh, wasn't really even challenged until... The mid 80s with uh, uh, a Royals player that I got to watch. And uh, George Brett came dangerously close. I think there were some things going on out there. That was the pine tar year. And of course, by 1987 or 8, I'd watched my last baseball game in earnest. I saw the, I went to one, I think, in Toronto, and I went to the first game ever. Uh, here in Florida, uh, in uh, Tampa for the Rays. Uh, and that's been it. And, of course, uh, I don't think I went to a football game since 1980. Still don't want to go to one. Want to go to one less. But uh, we'll even talk about that today because there is some news out here that I find interesting. Uh, anything else going on? Eh, I think that's it. We've just got a light volume bump. Uh, the details are pretty much uh, leaked out of the tax plan, pretty much what we were talking about, and uh, a little bit of disappointment, I think, this morning on that, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, let's go to some charts and take a look at uh, what you got. And one of the things that you have to know when you're uh, going after highly shorted stocks, there are no guarantees. Uh, I liked uh, trading at Tesla. Uh, I shorted this thing. I think the uh, email went out to the subscribers of the Tech Insider. At uh, eh, I said about uh, I said shorted above uh, 382. I think when I sent it, I was shorting it at about 386. I think it went to three, yeah, 389. So it spiked a little up there. It didn't last that long, a couple hours up in that area, but it was going against this previous high of 12.7 million shares on June 23rd. Uh, so you were looking at 13 million shares to 7 million shares. Uh, that was pretty good. Uh, but what I really liked is this pattern, and this is what I look for in the art of the charts, and that's my power law vector in there, Cater, showed an 8.4 on the way down, a 5.4 on the way up, the light test uh, of the highs. So we've got the story. That is heavy on the way down, light on the way up, Test of the highs on light, almost half the volume. And one of the other things that it changed was uh, Tesla's days to cover had fallen in half in the last six months, and the short interest uh, it was down by about a third. Um, now, let's take a look. Uh, we got into what should be support here, but there's something bigger going on that I want to talk about when we return for the very special. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 and an email here what else do i think is great now trombone shorty tonight down in st pete gonna see them Looking forward. I, in fact, this is one of the first weeks in a while that there's some stuff outside of normally what I do that really seems to interest me. Anyway, Trombone Shorty, if you've never listened to that that uh, bunch, uh, man, what a what a great uh, band and a lot of uh, talent. Uh, not many out there lately that make me, you know, in the last five ten years that really seem to have any talent. A lot of uh, auto tune. Bozos, but uh, very, very good stuff. So what else am I excited about? Blade Runner 2049. I saw some big parts of it yesterday, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. I remember how blown away I was with the first movie. It's, uh, it's kind of like the first time that someone made a watercolor drawing that really popped off the paper. And uh, I remember that, 1982. What a absolute incredible movie, Vangelis soundtrack, uh, lighting, uh, the mood, and the story, which is really a story torn out of the headlines today. What makes us human? If we made some, if we cloned somebody, could you make a slave of that somebody? Would they be a person? Could you kill that person without going to jail? Are they actually a person? Anyway, a lot of things I'm looking forward to here in the next week or so, whether the market goes up or down. But in Tesla, one of the things that I've looked at before and seen is these highly shorted stocks, which normally I kind of stay away from. I waited until this thing basically got up and everybody quit shorting it, um, and it came back down. But one of the things, if you think the market's really going to take a header and you've got a stock that tends to be a cult stock, and one that a lot of people just know is going to head lower. Uh, when the markets start falling apart, it's not uncommon for these things to go higher. And I think I'm going to get another swing at this thing. We'll look at about 365. But 
Um, if you don't, if you have a stock that's got some fairly decent short interest and it starts falling apart, uh, what's uh, bring up Nvidia? Because uh, NVDA, uh, this thing's come off the highs and really hasn't done much either. This is why we're going to start talking about the SMHs and the lack of volume. This is up a little bit off the open without much juice at all out here, 7.6 million shares. But we got to take a look. Uh, uh, got to look at uh, what else is happening in this. But not a lot of juice. Basically, we got a handful of new stocks. Uh, I'm going to say Micron is doing all the hefty lifting. But when we look at uh, stocks like uh, other stocks like uh, Apple and its supply chain, uh, certainly not doing much. Uh, its bounce is uh, pretty anemic along with uh, its supply chain bounce. This thing actually looks like it's headed back to go retest the 149. I get a lot of people asking me if I should short Apple, and I keep on saying the money is going to be much better in the supply chain than it is in Apple. Look at all the suppliers. We kind of talk about the two biggest ones, but I mean, there's like 12 people out there in the supply chain. Uh, Apple did go ahead and buy the, uh, it was part of a consortium uh, that bought the, uh, bought the Toshiba memory business. Again, Apple's trying to second source anything it can. Um, of the people in this consortium, probably the uh, two biggest uh, ones out here that are interesting is Seagate Technology. This one really didn't do anything on the news of signing the, the deal yesterday. And of course, uh, the uh, crybaby in the bunch was Western Digital, and they kind of came down um, fairly succinctly today. They, you know, they were a little lower out here, but uh, this thing did it pretty much what you want, which is fill about half the gap and then come lower. Uh, Western Digital, I think, is in a heap of trouble because of that. We'll see as we go forward. Uh, uh, SWKS, we'll take a quick look at Skyworks Solution. This one, to me, was the more of the interesting ones out here today, especially the action today. Uh, SMH just pushing back up to the highs. You can't get anything going on in this one today. We're up with 650,000 shares. You had 1.5 million shares yesterday. So what's going on up here? This thing should be racing. If, a if Apple's going back to the highs, if everything's going to the highs, what's happening? Well, we got a couple of stocks out there, like Micron, uh, like Intel, that are kind of holding this stuff up for the moment. But it's going to be, tar uh, they are odd men out for the most part. Uh, and I don't see a whole lot coming back in Skyworks Solution. Now, let's take a look at the SMHs. Uh, this is uh, 223 uh, today. Okay, so we're coming back up. Uh, we came down heavy on the 20th, did so with uh, 4.6 million shares. So how much do we got today? Oh, we got 1.5 million shares. So 4.6 million shares to the downside, 1.5 million shares to the upside in the SMHs. So do we go retest this high hand? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. What do we know? There is no juice behind this, at least today. So we'll see how this goes uh, <laughs> where is Disney headed? He's got an email here from Warren in Denver. Um, I tell you what, uh, I didn't get into it because uh, I kind of forgot about it, uh, but I'll look at it here. Um, we actually have some people calling for these big media companies to be shorted, which is uh, maybe they're trying to get you short so they can squeeze you. Maybe they're lying. Maybe they're telling the truth. But uh, I don't see uh, anything getting better. In fact, the news I read today uh, basically says that the football player is going to put a thumb in everybody's eye. Uh, you know, probably not a good thing. In fact, I know how to short, get rid of this. Uh, and I've been thinking about it. Of course, I don't go to football games. I may make an exception. I know how to end all of this crap in the NFL, and I can do it in one afternoon. Do we have enough time to talk about it? I'll finish this up. That's a tease. I can get rid of those players kneeling on the ground literally in an afternoon. We'll talk about that in the next segment. But uh, I'm trying to remember what the uh, 
feel was here. Okay, it was J.P. Morgan. I just forgot about this thing. Uh, uh, encouraging investors to bet against CBS stock ahead of this weekend's NFL broadcast. The bank recommends buying an option that will give you the right to sell the shares at 57.50 on the likelihood that the stock will fall below that price after the company discloses ratings for the games. CBS closed at 58 bucks on Tuesday. So I don't know if I'd want to do that. I have something I think would be a, a lot more fun. And since I don't watch football anyway, it would be doubly fun to torture those who do. We'll talk about that when I come back. Fun and games, dirty tricks, all the other stuff going on. Anyway, we're going to watch this market uh, volume, uh, 1.95 billion shares, not much going on. But I had, a, I had an idea, the kind of ideas you, you don't get very often in your life. But I know how to, I know how to solve it. So uh, hang on to that. Call me at 877-927-6648. But I think you're going to love what I have to tell you. Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Yeah, a little bit of trombone shorty there with hurricane season. Okay, so here's my, uh, here's my, I don't think I can do this legally, but this is what I do. I'd probably short Walt Disney and CBS and the rest of them and then go buy, I don't know, 50,000 red uh, handkerchiefs, fill them with a little bit of uh, rice, put a rubber band at them so they look just like the flags that they throw on the play. And just give them to everybody outside and say, okay, uh, the players want to protest. I want you to protest. I don't care what it's about. Save the whales, hate the dolphins at SeaWorld. I don't care. Just protest everything and on every play. Literally just start tossing them out of the stands all over the field. Um, I think if you did that for the whole game, I don't even know if you have to do that till halftime. It would be over. You've got... Uh, you know, many of these uh, sports coverages, uh, the NFL told them not to show the fans protesting in the stands. But I think that's all it would take, wouldn't it? When they don't stand, throw your protest flag. It's all about flags, isn't it? Just throw your flag. Just throw them on the field every single play. They Eventually, the things would get ridiculous. It'd look like a circus, and everybody would stop. We could go right back. And as much as I dislike football, you could watch it in peace from now on. All we got to do is actually have the fans protest to the point where the game can't go on, and then that would be it. Everybody could go back to what they're doing. If you want to protest, go down on the street corner, get your little, get your little uh, uh, soapbox, get up on it and yell at people uh, as they come by. That's the way it was always done in New York uh, Times Square. There was a guy telling me it was the end of the uh, end of the world. I kind of enjoyed it, mostly because I could walk away. But I think that's the way to do it. I don't know how many people think that that would be it. Uh, throw the terrible towels in uh, Pittsburgh. But I'm thinking f throw a flag. Give them a penalty for each and every play. It would be over. We move on. Anyway, uh, Walt Disney, I don't think it would be ethical because I have a feeling <laughs> Walt Disney would be 90 and the SEC would come after me if I actually started that and went to the – Tampa Bay Stadium this weekend. I don't even know if they're playing it down. And started giving away all these things and encouraging people to play. I certainly wouldn't pay, but I, I I might pay to go in there and watch the circus. Wouldn't it be Wouldn't it just be nice for regular people just to protest over nothing until uh, no one protested anymore? Just go, cast your vote, and then shut up. Okay, what do we got going on in Disney? You know, this thing looks like it's coming back to 95 bucks. I don't know what else you can say about it. You've got good support there. Um, but uh, you've got even people like J.P. Morgan and the rest saying short it. Uh, they're not big on shorting. I think they are more than willing to put a little pressure on these guys to get this out of the way. Uh, they don't like it either. They got money in it, and uh, that could be it. So just a thought. I don't know what anybody thinks about it. Maybe I think it's more brilliant than anybody else. But I think it would I think it would finish things almost instantly. The NFL would cry uncle and go run away. And uh, maybe they get rid of that bozo they have running the show who uh, uh, what he after he saw the video of that one player beating up his girlfriend in the thing, just ignored it. Isn't this the same guy? Eh, let's protest him. Anyway, I'm done. I'm off my soapbox now, but uh, I have not protested. Okay, let's take a look at some other stocks out here, and you can tell me. Uh... <laughs> okay, five below. Take a look at this one today. Uh, 1.5 million shares on May 19th, $54.13. What could we do? 800,000 shares, uh, 360,000 shares today. So you're going into 1.5 million shares. Certainly looks good. This is one that I kind of like as a short potential. One, it's in retail. Two, I've been in their stores. They're never busy. Now, maybe that's just stores around down here. But uh, they kind of put them next to the dollar stores, literally right next to them. I've been to to two of them, and they're right next to the dollar store. This thing had a huge volume off the May 19th high down to this July 11th low. Uh, the August 
31st low up to this high didn't have much juice in it at all. Uh, 2.5 on the power, uh, power law vector indicator number to a 1.7 on the way up. And of course, no volume today. Uh, we're talking about 358,000 shares going into 1.5 million. That kind of tells you, I think, a lot of what you're looking at. Again, we see, you know, the uh, the uh, the ones that are doing fairly good. Even uh, when we look at Intel today, uh, it's kind of whiffing out here. 44 million shares at the last high at 37.92. We got to 37.73 so far, but uh, today's volume is what? 10.5 million shares. So you're getting into a high there with one fourth the volume right now. So let's say this gets into there with one half the volume. Again, these are the stocks that are driving the market. Micron, probably one of the best. Um, nice pop yesterday with volume. Yesterday, you had uh, 85 million shares today, 40 million shares. So maybe this thing does 50, 55 million shares today. I wouldn't short it. Again, wouldn't short NVIDIA either. Uh, as I said, these highly shorted stocks that did break already are probably going to be a little bit better off if the market does start moving uh, lower. What you want to do is find stocks that had very light volume and testing previous highs. Again, we're off like a buck on NVIDIA, so no big deal. But again, people are not piling back into the same stocks again. And of course, it's all about the, all about the ETFs, isn't it? And those ETFs are driving what we have going on. So eh, can we go a little higher? You never know. But my guess is that uh, even if we do go a little higher, if we don't get volume, this thing's going to uh, fall like a souffle fairly quickly. Uh, let's take a look at Cree. Uh, this thing's been bouncing around this level for forever. I remember shorting this in the Tech Insider when we found out that there was a, a new technology that would drastically drop the price of LEDs, in fact, uh, LED bulbs. In fact, I went and bought four 65 equivalent watt LED bulbs this week for, I think, 10 bucks. So Cree basically makes it by selling uh, very high capacity LEDs for flashlights and some very specialized lighting stuff. But I don't think this thing ever sees 65 bucks again today. And I think that's what everybody thinks that these things are going to come back. Um, it's hard to take over General Electric's business, which was always kind of a low margin business for light bulbs and have that stick over time, even with new technology. Uh, LEDs are a commodity and kind of always will. But what you're really looking at this one today is this going back into the uh, high of February 2nd. That was at uh, just a hair under 28 bucks with 3.4 million shares. And what do we have today? 577,000 shares. So I can go and do this all day long. There are a lot of stocks up at highs with no volume today. Now, maybe we get the volume tomorrow. Maybe that doesn't work out. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to get fixated on the, on the stock that have already blown up like Apple. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from EverBank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. 
Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. EverBank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile scanner plus right at tfnn.com and when you sign up you gain instant access to john logan's most recent webinar how price volume and time make market profile so unique this hour-long webinar with john logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader you pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk free for more information on the taz profile scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And another you know, one out here that I'm keeping an eye on. I would love this thing to hit 45 bucks. Is electronics for imaging. This thing blew apart, uh, and, and from 48 bucks to 25 bucks in a heartbeat. Did that on the uh, 4th of August. It's kind of come back and filled most of that. You may not get the the tick on this, but this thing hits 45 bucks, and uh, man, you could uh, you could see this thing come pretty much come back to 30 bucks fairly quickly. So, and probably eventually test this 2554 that has never been uh, retested, the August 7th low. So I'm gonna give you a lot of stocks to take a look at here today, and we'll see just what you're, uh, what you're interested in. CSX, the train company, the Choo Choo, uh, down on the 19th of July with 30 million shares. Last three days, 5 million shares, 5 million shares, uh, oh. 2 million shares. I thought we were going up and blowing out the highs. Well, not so much. I'm giving you an alternate opinion of the world. Uh, let's see some other ones here. Big lots. Now, this one tends to be uh, interesting in down markets. Uh, on the, what is that, March the 7th, this gap down on 1.9 million shares. Yesterday, you had 1.3 million shares today. We're turning about 940,000 shares as it fills that gap. So keep an eye on that one. WWE, I wouldn't short this because I don't short stocks below 30 bucks. But guess what? 1.2, uh, 1.3 million shares on February 14th. Uh, we spiked that yesterday with 727,000 shares. Today, kind of holding up here with, what is that? 177,000 shares. Ah, ah. So certainly it's no juice up here at the highs. Let's take a few look at some of these other ones out here that are supposedly uh, just uh, rip roaring and ready to go. T -t 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 Let's see if there's anything else out here. DHI, let's take a look at that. DH Horton, wanted to see if this thing did any better yesterday. It uh, actually did break uh, higher with some decent volume. One of the few out here. Uh, yesterday, 8 million shares into the 4.6 million shares of the July 12th high. Uh, today, 6.3 million shares. So you actually do have some juice in this one. Let's see what else out here. AF, what is that? Crombie and Fitch 
or a story of financial. Saw a handful of these financial stocks last night with light volume. Uh, 17 million shares on the March 10th high of AF. And what do we have yesterday? Uh, 1.5, what's 1.6 million shares. Uh, today, a little less than 700,000 shares so far. So 117th the volume of that major high that uh, occurred back there. So you're back into that. Um, a lot of these ones that have super light volume are the, are the. Uh, I noticed where a lot of them were on the west or on the east coast of Florida, and these things are all uh, broker dealer services for a lot of people in Florida that are in the investment community. I thought it was kind of interesting, not the big guys, but the people that you really don't hear a lot about. So I thought that was interesting. VFH, which is Vanguard Financials, uh, this ETF. Eh, not as bad as some of the other ones out here. This one certainly didn't break above with the uh, sign of strength yesterday, 442,000 shares compared to the 1.4 million shares back on August 8th. Today, 300,000 shares so far. So we'll see how that one does over the next couple of days. We did uh, that one. We did that one. Do we want to do something else? We did five. See if there's anything else out here. It's MTG, Magic Investments. This one's another one of these a dealer services thing, if I'm not mistaken, including, in fact, let me read the uh, profile on this one because uh, what do we got? I'm pretty sure provides private mortgage insurance and ancillary services to lenders and government sponsored entities. Um, this one's in Milwaukee, but again, with all these hurricanes, some of these loans are not probably going to get paid back. And these are the guys that are uh, have the most risk. Um, right now, you're not seeing much of this, but I do kind of, uh, I don't short $12 stocks. This thing used to be like a quarter at the depths of the uh, housing bubble. Uh, and to see it up here on light volume is always a little scary. Uh, 4.7 million shares back on July 20th, $12.25. Uh, 3 million shares yesterday. Uh, today, 1.5 million shares as we go a little higher. So maybe these things do get some volume in the next day or so and they start going higher. They're kind of hanging up here with no volume today, noticeably light volume. Uh, but uh, you may look into some of these reassures. I remember this was one that I actually shorted uh, along with some broker dealers when on May 5th, 2008, uh, every single broker dealer and a handful of other stocks, including Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, every single one of them in the marketplace retested previous highs on half the volume. I couldn't find, I'd never seen anything. I kept on looking to see whether or not all my data was right. I remember that day because it was one of the days that truly I felt like a professional trader uh, when I could see all of that uh, in, the, uh, in the front view and figure out why every single uh, stock in the marketplace in that sector was acting that way. But uh, hey, I do digress. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, okay. You can uh, email me at path at tfnn.com, by the way. And I think I got a couple more here. So we'll take a look at. I uh, want to look at Microsoft, MSFT. Uh, as we said uh, yesterday, uh, Redbox, not Redbox, uh, what is it? Uh, I'll think of it here in a minute. Red Hat, excuse me, Redbox. Red Hat um, had good earnings. Of course, a lot of that actually came from Microsoft as they're helping them out. I uh, want to see if Microsoft's out here doing anything great today. And uh, to, wow, uh, 6.8 million shares. You can't really say a lot because it's just going sideways. Uh, did break above the previous high, uh, did so for a couple of days, broke right back down into this trading range. My guess is that uh, I wouldn't want to short Microsoft. It is one of the better ones out here. Uh, you want to see how this tests 71.28, which is the August 11th low. And we'll see how that's doing out there. Uh, Facebook in a war of words uh, with the president over the last day or so. Um, and uh, I guess he responded uh, by saying that, uh, no, I'm not. 
uh, when saying that uh, Facebook uh, was taking sides politically. But I find this very strange because I have a good memory. And I remember that they got caught liar, liar, pants on fire back in June and July of last year, actually manipulating uh, search and results and cutting stuff out of their feed that they didn't like politically. They blamed it on, of course, their own employees and said that they would train them better. I didn't know if it was training better not to get caught or training them better to be objective. I guess it was, it was the first. We'll talk about this, but up on a light volume today, too. We'll be back. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits and the Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Come join me next hour as we bisect and dissect these markets. Right here on TFNN. Wow! Okay, uh, what is it? Uh, 2.53 uh, Eastern Time. Um, looking at my uh, report here, we got uh, $150 billion dollars. Uh, compared to the almost $300 billion we did yesterday. Uh, so we got about an hour and 10 minutes. But uh, this is very, very light. This is not a lot of juice coming in, at least dollar-weighted. There's not a lot of juice coming into the marketplace. Uh, Facebook, uh, uh, what do we have? Two days ago, we had uh, 20, let's call it 24 million shares. Yesterday, 19.2 million shares. Today, less than 10 million shares. Now, this is all in this huge uh, down day of 41.2 million shares. So we're just basically up to the top of that. Um, a lot of people uh, willing to get their cash back 
if they think they've gone on the wrong side of this, uh, just a few bucks higher. But again, uh, juice just not in Facebook, not in any of these, um, maybe in some small caps. But the small caps don't add up to a lot of cap. They're kind of a small cap, kind of a beanie. Maybe that's it. Anyway, I saw an article this morning about uh, being uh, U.S. traders being able to trade the commodity markets of China. I sent that off to Andy Heck. I know he's going to be, what, in the next hour or is it 4 o'clock? I never can remember from Tuesdays to Thursdays. He's in one of those hours. Maybe he'll start talking about the ability to actually trade those markets in China, whether we need to or not. I thought it was interesting. I hadn't thought about it much. But uh, China's growing up. They've got their own commodities markets. And do you think that we can trust them to be fair and objective? Can we look at those markets as true reflections? Can we make sure that the ChICOMs don't uh, kind of manipulate them for their own good? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I'll look forward to Tom and Andy maybe discussing this thing. and more. That's uh, Andy today at 5. Uh, Tom, for the next two hours. As always, sell when you can't, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Bright and shiny. Same bad channel. Same bad Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September.